This is Flex. We're happy to be back at another Women in Automotive event. And I'm absolutely excited to host, host that panel um, discussion today. So actually, the journey for Flex began two years ago. And even that was my beginning of it when Flex has joined the first time live on stage for such an event. And um, so that was really, for me, really, really important. It is absolutely a tremendous network uh, option for all of us. And that's why I'm supporting it personally. So today you see me switching roles because I will act as a moderator. Usually I have been part of the panel discussion um, itself, but today I'm moderating the great um, panel here today. So, and this will be all about driving change. But before we come to that, let me quickly introduce Flex. So Flex is a 26 billion US dollar company, and we are split it into different segments. And one of that segments is automotive. And all the people here on the panel are belonging to the automotive um, segment. And we are um, in the product um, focus for us is electrification and here in specific high voltage products. And then we have connectivity and we have compute and that goes up to autonomous compute. And we do design and we do manufacture. And of course, we will deliver the products that we have designed and manufactured to the customers. We are in the automotive segment, 14,000 employees worldwide, and we are running over 30 sites. So that's just short. So you have a bit of an understanding of who is Flex um, because of some of you might have not heard about us before. I'm excited about our really global presence here of the panel. And if you might have recognized, so if you have been part of our last sections, you will recognize that we have today a male on board of that panel. So, and that male is Jean-Francois Zellum. And there's good reasons for. Jean-Francois has ever been a real ambassador on the topic of diversity, especially in Europe. And that's why he has the absolutely right to play. And um, so actually, Jean-Francois, why don't start with you? As you have been with Flex over 18 years, I would at first request you to introduce yourself quickly. And then I would like to know, so over that past decades even, that past two decades, um, how did you see um, diversity has changed within that? Yeah. So First of all, thank you, Melanie, to have me here. As I said, I mean, diversity is actually a very important subject for me, and I was supporting that over the last years in Europe. Let me quickly introduce myself. I'm the SVP uh, in charge of operation for the automotive segment on one hand. So automotive segment, it's uh, 25 production sites in the world right now, over all the continents. And I have a second role at bit, which is I'm the coordinator or the lead of the European operation cross segments to ensure consistency among the footprint and the, the development we are doing there. In Europe, we employ roughly 30,000 people. To answer a bit more specifically your question, okay, I think I, I joined Flex in 2006, so it's 18 years back. And at the, when I started, it was really a completely male dominated environment. I mean, there were very few women at different stage of the company, especially in the production area, especially in the operation. There were more in the sales fields or in the marketing fields, but on the production, on the shop floor, at different level of management, it was really a male dominated industry. And honestly, I come from Alcatel. I spent 14 years before by Alcatel. It was a bit the same. I mean, all the production floor were actually really a main dominated industry. Uh, things are evaluating. I mean, it, in the course of time, it went better rather slowly uh, until we really started to work on it. Um, I think there are many reasons for that. I think the first one, and it was addressed when one of the, by Fabienne from Capgemini before, I think one of the hurdles we still have is that there is a lack of candidate of women, okay? And that's the, the fact of the attractivity of the technical operation job, which is still seen um, as being actually a, a male dominated environment, which is then driving also uh, the woman to not take engineering studies. I mean, she was, the numbers she mentioned before are very clear. I mean, the biggest automotive engineer school in France, the Estaca, have only 11% of women which are applying for it okay so and i think the the point is where we're going to evaluate on that is really going to give actually a more attractive image of 
our industry, and especially the production field, because here I'm speaking for operations uh, of the production field, to women so that they embrace these careers, these technical engineering careers, so that we can also have gradually more women in our, in our crews. The second point on which we are working is also then once the women are in the company, is the lack of structure to help them actually to, to grow in the company. And, and we address that. Um, last, of well, not last, but the next one is also, I mean, up to recently, let's be frank, it was not really a subject. It started to be a subject six or seven years ago, where actually really company fixed that actually having diverse team is really a benefit and that somewhere we need to work on it. And the fact of taking them objectively and proactively in hand makes a huge difference. Um, we started also to measure um, our level of diversity, which makes a thing, uh, which makes a, already a big difference. And the last is also the leadership focus, which you are putting on it. Uh, for me personally, uh, I led a lot of teams, uh, complex teams on various culture. So I'm really um, a firm and partisan of the diversity, being the diversity in culture, being the diversity in uh, also in, in gender and in origin of the people. Uh, I mean, that's really what, first of all, from a personal point of view, what makes my job so so attractive and so to some extent so interesting, but also from an efficiency point of view, because you really see and you really can measure that when you have diverse people from a cultural point of view, but also from a gender diversity point of view, you have a different type of debate in the things. I mean, there, there are different views of, uh, of the people on the same project. And the fact of being able to combine that, especially the more the, pro the, 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 the problem is complex, is helping you to have a better resolution of it. That's why I'm also personally very proud about the action which have been taken by Flex over the last, last years. Um, um, under the leadership of our uh, new CEO, of, uh, she's not that new anymore because it was almost <laughs> four years that Trevati joined the company. She's an engineer, she's a woman, she's coming from India, so it's a model of diversity. And uh, actually, she really accelerated the movement here by putting in, in place, actually, from a leadership point of view and actually convincing everybody that it's really something important. And then actually by putting in place very concrete measures uh, in order to help. And I'm very proud of what we did in EMEA, together also with your support, Melanie, to implement this program of Stronger, She Leads, and all the mentoring program in order to help the woman uh, to grow, in order to give them the confidence which some bias are actually harming sometimes, so that really we can bring, on one hand, more and more women attracted by technical production engineering jobs and second once they are in able to develop them and avoid any kind of bias with that i'm handing over a bit back to you melanie okay thank you jean francois thank you and i will ask my i'm absolutely happy to have her on board it's early enough for you my would you please introduce yourself very quickly and then i would like uh, to ask you who should drive change. Yeah, thanks, Melanie. And hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Mai Deng Wu. Uh, I'm the Director of Technology and Business Development at Flex Automotive. And like Jean-Francois, I'm also from France, but I'm now based in the Bay Area in California. And as you know, it's pretty early morning right now, uh, around 7 a.m. Melanie, I'm, I'm really glad that you're asking this question because this is really a topic that is very close to my heart. I'm an electrical engineer by training, and I've been working in the hardware industry for all my career. So I've been around male dominated environments for quite a long time. So it's very close to me. So picking up from uh, Jean-Francois uh, comments, yes, I think that absolutely. It's everyone's responsibility uh, to drive change at that level and everyone can play a role and be empowered uh, to help overcome gender biases and obviously other biases as well, right? Where if we can create a workplace where everyone feel valued, then you know everyone benefits from it. For example, I know that in our Flex uh, leadership competency framework, there's a common language that we use across the whole organization um, from the CEO to every individual contributor. 
And in this uh, competency framework, there are three pillars, strategy, people, and results. And if we look at the people pillar, it particularly puts the emphasis on inclusion and diversity. And uh, it creates a culture overall that really fully leverages the benefits of, uh, of diversity. And uh, for me personally, as a people manager, know that I hear I have a role to play uh, in filling the gaps in uh, the pipeline for candidates uh, for more senior roles, uh, fostering the right culture in the company, mentoring, uh, coaching. And this I do regardless of gender and culture, uh, of course, but with uh, extra care, you know, for the women in the teams, especially when we have to notice, you know, early signs of burnout, for example, that uh, we know are going to be more prevalent uh, in, um, in women. And in order to invest for a sustainable and diverse future, you really have to continually invest to ensure that change is ongoing at every level. Um, back to you, Melanie. Thank you, Mai. Uh, Daniela. So the last one on stage, Daniela, would you please as well introduce yourself? And then can you share some light where you would say you have been witness um, of change and diversity um, at Flex? Oh, yes, for sure, Melanie, I will. So hello to everybody. My name is Daniela Behrens. I'm a business development manager. I'm located in our German office in Stuttgart and I joined the company five years ago. And as long as I can remember, I always had a passion for cars. And meanwhile, I can really look back on 15 years in the automotive industry, passion about what I'm doing, the flexibility and also the drive to learn new things opened several doors for me within the last years. So especially the years in project management, they were instructive and shaped my personality. And I'm still very grateful to my manager at this time, who gave me the freedom, who developed to develop myself, to try things out. He was always there and provided support, and he for sure always encouraged me. In retrospective, I noticed points that I took for granted in former times. You know, men were always dominant if it came to numbers. Even in college, the ratio between men versus women was unbalanced. So fortunately, the picture is changing, even if slowly, but it's changing. And it's, it is empirically proven that diverse teams are more productive and creative. So companies and industries in the meantime are recognizing the importance of a diverse workforce. So the acceptance towards women in previously male dominated industries is getting better and better. But overall, I have to say that I never had any big problems due to the gender imbalance. So probably largely due to this effect because I was always lucky with my male colleagues and superiors. They respected me, they encouraged me in what I was doing. And I think this is important. You need to get the respect from others. Looking back from today's perspective, I can remember a handful of situations which were perceived negative at this time. You know, there's always one person in the room doing jokes or coming up with inappropriate comments. So at the beginning of my career, I accepted it. It was as it is. So especially in such situations, I was looking for support for my colleagues. It was so important because at the beginning of my career, I was lacking the needed self-confidence. So the strongness to let them know that the way they, in, they are acting isn't acceptable and is inappropriate. And in my opinion, it's a fundamental problem. So we as women, we must learn to be more self-confident. We need to address things that we don't like or that even feel make us um, uncomfortable. And this also means stepping in for others, supporting us, um, supporting each other. And unfortunately, we as women often don't address the problem because we're simply afraid of being excluded from the team. But I have to say that in the 15 years, it has dramatically improved. But it doesn't mean that it needs to stay in and remain stationary. So for me, improvement is definitely something which is continuous. So back to you, Melanie. Thank you, Daniela. And I couldn't agree more. Thank you for your candid perspective. Uh, my question to you, did you ever receive challenges around the topic diversity within Flex or even before? Yeah, it was great to hear about uh, Daniela experience. And I'm sure that every woman in the audience has her own share of experience. And as a woman of color myself, I think there's an additional layer of challenges. 
um, that I experienced and also others may relate to as well, because there's really data that shows that there's an even bigger gap to fill at each step of uh, the ladder for minorities. Um, I really enjoy working at Flex, a very global company, which takes you know, diversity very seriously. As JF has mentioned, you know, uh, it, it starts at the CEO level, right? And it shows that um, you, know, you can have women at every levels of the company at all leadership levels. Uh, for my part, I think I've experienced uh, microaggressions in my career, uh, mostly, especially when I was just starting early on and uh, working in less diverse uh, environments than Flex or the Bay Area. So microaggressions are really those little remarks or questions or actions that are really painful because they are related to a person's membership in a group that's discriminated against and uh, kind of subjects, subject to stereotypes. And uh, they can really contribute to a hostile uh, environment and reduce performance at work as well. Um, examples could be, well, you're really clever for a woman uh, or you don't sound black or saying, you know, when working on a project, oh, uh, you're going to do the math. It's your thing when talking to someone who looks Asian, right? Because apparently we're supposed to be really, really good at mental calculation, which unfortunately um, I'm not really. <laughs> so I was asking meetings, uh, for example, where my manager was or if someone else like more senior was going to join, even though I was fully in charge of the topic. So what really helps in these cases is to have allies, uh, especially senior male leaders uh, that can then step in and say, well, uh, she's in charge. I listen to her. So redirecting the conversation a little bit. Um, another time, I remember I was discussing career paths with a senior leader. Uh, I really admired his career. He worked globally, was very successful, and um, he was sharing about his experience. And he, then he told me, but my wife raised the children. And so I don't think it would be suitable for you because you have children. And, um, you know, that kind of left me speechless at that time. But fortunately, at Flex, I also had access to people that provided a completely different perspective on, uh, on parenting and also assured me that, yes, you can really, uh, you know, work, have a successful and fulfilling career. And uh, having a family is not incompatible, right? Um, so uh, overall, you know, going back to my earlier comments, my, my takeaway, you know, would be we need committed and strong leaders. Um, walk the talk is best. Um, we also need measurable programs, for example, mentoring programs that exist. And uh, these, you know, need to take place over time because change, as everyone knows, takes time and is incremental. And um, also more specific initiatives to address the challenges and, and focus on the root cause of this is, uh, is always beneficial as well. And uh, as I was saying earlier as well, absolutely everyone can, can contribute at his or her own level and take ownership of this responsibility. Thank you, Molly. And I completely feel uh, with you. So Daniela, um, Question for me is, if I'm not mistaken, you have been personally involved in some of the initiatives that Flex is offering, right? Can you share with us which was the one that really stood out for you? So, yes, correct, Melanie. So I had the chance to um, participate in a program called Strong Her. And this program is a series of supportive activities which are designed to empower women in FLEX to achieve their full potential. So program covered key modules like play big, navigate through emotions or personal resilience, for example. And the virtual trainings were supported by networking sessions, but also by a strong HER pathway. And the pathway is a space for us women where we find inspirations and insight around mindset, but also skills and behaviors that are helping us to utilize our talents and full potential. 
And for me personally, I like the modules in a critics as well as dealing with praise and criticism. So I know each of you knows the voice that expresses the criticism and disapproval about your actions, the voice of self-doubt and self-criticism. This is our internal judge and jury. And if we do not manage it well, it might hold us back, it may shame us, but also destroy our courage. And as the name suggests, the inner critic's purpose is to be critical as it does with the imposter syndrome. So the feeling of being incompetent despite all the contrary evidence. And the module explained very well the importance of recognizing and not ignoring or suppressing your inner critic because it simply doesn't work. In fact, if you ignore the unpleasant thoughts and the un emotions, it will lead to a rebound effect. And what Strong Her did here is they provided us a toolbox to recognize when our inner critic shows up, but they gave us as well in the moment as well as long-term strategies how to handle it. And the second module um, I really liked was dealing with criticism and praise. And they gave some valuable insights on how negatively influenced we can be by the fear of people's opinion. So how often does the fear of what other people think stop you from doing something? I think that's often the case. So we're always be playing safe because we are afraid of being ridiculed and being rejected. But it's important to pay less attention to it because we need to believe in our talent and on our values to unblock our potential. And to unhook from praise and criticism to get out of this cage, we need to incorporate feedback that is strategically useful for us. So it means we need to recognize whose and what feedback we need and simply ignore the rest. And here Strong Her provided really useful information and also a pathway how to achieve this. Thank you, Daniela. So Jean-Francois. You heard my and Daniela sharing a lot of insight, experience. And um, so you as a senior leader and you as a male, um, I would like to hear from you, what color can you add on what you have been heard and what, what advices can you share? Yeah, so I think the first on, on, what, on the, the events or whatever, what May and Daniela was thinking, I think, these are on not tolerable, okay? So, um, and I think if for some reason organization tolerated that some years back, I think that's over. And and actually most of the people completely understand that and it's completely normal at the end of the day. Uh, so I think it's important that organizations, leaders are really not tolerating that. It's important that women when they are subject to microaggressions like that they they are not scared about speaking about it okay and not putting it below the car under the carpet okay so it's it's something which is not tolerable anymore uh, which was never tolerable by the way but it was matter of fact but it's it's really not tolerable and and we would be i would be we would be very strict with uh, with events like this one okay um I think things are moving, okay? I think the, 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 the level of remark, and I think everybody sees that a little bit, which is uh, people are evaluating, and thanks God, okay? So things are getting better. Again, what remains is still intolerable, okay? The second point, and I think it's also what Daniela mentioned, I think it's really uh, to help actually the woman to take more self-confidence uh, in their development, in their in the work they do, to not have all these barriers where they have to even be psychologically far stronger than a man in order to not feel uh, at the right position or not able to to progress. I think the program which we put in place and Daniel referred to stronger have really this purpose and these things. And I think we are making great progress with that. And last, I mean, the point it's of course, it's it's everybody's responsibility to promote diversity. Uh, it's not a woman to woman story. I mean, it's uh, all the leaders, okay? And all the leaders are, are really now recognizing more and more by us actually the benefit of this diversity. And also, to some extent, the ethical aspect of it, that there is no reason to not promote that, at the contrary. Um, and, and, and principally, when, when I look at the job or 
to fulfill a job of somebody I'm hiring, okay, or somebody I'm promoting actually more in, 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 from the company. Of course, you look first to the capabilities and actually the cultural fit and so on. But honestly, you have also to take into account that to support in this type of decision, the thing in the, the woman in order to have this accelerator factor to give them a bit more benefit and credit to give them a chance. I mean, when you hire somebody, you're never sure about the guy fitting or not fitting or the person fitting or not fitting. Okay, so it's always a approximative judgment. So, but I think it's really important that we are also ready as a leader to take a bit more risk to promote a woman which might not be completely as ready okay but to take the risk to help her then to coach her in order to her to be successful and yeah and that's what we do with this program and then it's also an individual thing of each of the the leaders of course we have statistics we are follow we have goals of having actually a, a diversity equality as part of our sustainability goals and that helps i mean that drives the organization yeah. And that helps to accelerate, okay? So that's why, I mean, I'm very glad that you invited me to this thing so that I can reflect what is really, I mean, not just my position, but also, I mean, the, what Flex Management is actually putting in place. And with that, I'm handing over to you again, Melanie. Thank you. So um, we are really a bit time constrained. So for me, just last word on that is really driving change requires every company's leadership to really set, implement, and communicate goals. And those goals should not only be about financial KOIs, that goals is as well on culture and diversity and inclusion. With that, I would now quickly go to question and answers. And let me give me, please, a second for that. Let me scroll it. So, JF, the first question goes to you. Um, how do you, as a male senior executive, encourage the woman on your team to speak up and help enable opportunities for them to be heard or have a seat at the table? Yeah, so I think I don't have to encourage you, short. Melanie, because I don't have to encourage you, Melanie, because I think uh, you speak up all the time. No, no, it's really the point is in my style of management is also leaving actually letting all the people actually speak up and stuff like let them the time to explain sometimes there is a bs a lot of time there's a bs that we don't listen as manager because we have a preconditioned idea in the head and we don't really listen and let the people develop so it's a it's a disciplined manner to let the people explain and especially women because again the artist bs and stuff like that is underlying bit lack of confidence so we need really to to support that the second one also is is defend them because the BAs of the orders are also here, so sometimes they are cut by somebody and stuff like that. So it's really taking their defense and let them express. It's just normal. It's also a, a matter of respect to the to the people. Okay, so I think that's for the speak up and the, the opportunities. I think we spoke about it already before. Is getting them the means to have the self confidence by the by the development program when positions are open actually really take into consideration the diversity factor, which is, and, and, and pushing a bit for the drive of more diverse teams, which is the benefit of the company. Okay, thank you. Next question, Mai. You experienced first-hand bias on a number of levels, and one of the attendees commented on, we should not only help females, we should also help males to get over their biases. How would you see that playing out? Thanks for the question, Melanie. Um, I agree it's not about, you know, men versus women or any other like gender identification versus the others. Um, I'm always in favor of including more and more, you know, uh, men into these type of conversations. For example, we have um, employee resource groups at Flex uh, that are more focused on, for example, women at Flex, women in technology and things like that, that uh, are open to everyone. And um, we organize uh, sessions on networking, uh, for example, or personal finance, all these type of topics that speak to both men and, and women and that create a safe place for, for shared communication. It's really important that um, 
we don't think about it as a woman only type of uh, conversation. And uh, I'm glad that, you know, today on the panel, we see that represented as well. Thank you, Mai. So honestly, I would say even last question because otherwise <laughs> I get trouble, uh, goes to Daniela. On a gender equality issue, where you mentioned you saw improvement, do you see a shift with the younger generations in so far as it is a non-issue for them? So Melanie, that's a good question. So I'm definitely seeing a, cha a change in there. You know, the younger enter generation entering into a workforce, it's an important factor for them. So diversity is an essential point when they're evaluating an offer or choosing a new job. And also a company is gaining reputation if they're having a diverse workforce because it's a powerful recruiting tool. But in order to get this, the companies need to understand how important a varied mixture of skills, talent and strengths is. So it really enriches our business. So it means the contribution by every individual is important. And therefore, especially women are bringing a certain set um, of skills to the workforce. For example, they are supporting each other, they are collaborating, they are rewarding each other, and they are also inspiring each other. And for me, also women approach things differently. So often we are more creative. And one of the biggest challenges and, and opportunities a woman can bring to the workforce is definitely the way of communicating. So, um, Men are always communicating issues very directly. They are tackling confrontation. And we are women. We tend to be the peacemakers. We want to solve issues internally first. And also, we are very strong in verbal communication. It means we are observing things first prior we're acting into a rush. And this is something the younger generation is definitely looking at. And I mean, you saw also McKinsey's and delivery through diversity report, and it really shows that with a higher gender diversity um, on an upper management level, so the companies are more likely to outperform competitors in, their, in terms of profitability. So I think there's definitely a change in, in, the, in the current time from the company side, but also um, from the younger generations entering into workforces. Thank you, Daniela. And with that, I would hand back to the, uh, to the vendor. And thank you very much. That was a great session. Thank you. Thank you, Melanie. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.